Hi everyone, welcome back to Elmer's Restoration, video 38, if my counting is right. It's actually been a while since I've done anything for Elmer. The last couple of videos you've watched have been older footage put together. Um, so this is the first one I've done since after the Thistle run. And um, yeah, I've missed actually working on it. But I've got loads of plans, I want to do loads now. So what I want to do is get the subframe finished, the rear subframe. Um, and there's, there's not a great amount to do, I basically need to do the finish off the brakes the handbrake cable and the exhaust mounting kit and then the high lows so not a great amount and hopefully I'll get well I will get it done in this video what I'm going to do first there are a couple of things that I noticed after I'd done them before and also that was pointed out uh, by some of you guys that I need to fix just small things but small things that can make a difference so I'll take you around them to what I'm going to do and then we'll get on and get this thing finished and then we'll look at what's next for Eleanor. Right, so one of the issues was, as you can see, the nut here that holds the back plate on comes through and it's actually obstructing the, sp the spring there. The reason for that is the spring I've put on upside down. This comes out and it'll turn round and it gives just that few mil of clearance and it won't be touching that. These um, aren't actually the correct bolts for here, but it's only the length, and if that's clear from there, they're not obstructing anything else. It's only the top one. So basically what I need to do is take the brake assembly off, unhook the spring, flip it the other way, and um, then I can come back to you with that. And um, yeah, I've done that on both sides. So Simple mistake, but easy to make, and once you've made it once, you won't do it again. And hopefully by me showing this, it'll point out to you guys as well that the springs have got a certain way they go in. So, off camera, I'm going to take it off, show you what it's like here, and then I'll come back to you once it's back on. So I've taken it out, flipped the spring round, and you can see there's clearance now there between the nut and the spring in here. I'm not too happy with the spring though, because if you could see in this bit here, what it's been fouling when it was the other way, it's basically, it's stretched it slightly. And by stretching it slightly, it's taken some of the tension off the spring. And this is a spring, so when you use the handbrake cable, it pulls it here. If this has got any looseness in it at all, it's not working effectively. And these aren't dear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to order a new pack of springs for this on the other side because these have been sitting under tension for a while with the subframe sitting anyway so I've always said in the past if you're not happy with something replace it so um, that's what I'm going to do with this right, I'm going to bash on with what I've got until um, the parts I need arrive so I've done the other side flexi hose this um, took me about 10 minutes to find it actually fell down the back so I thought I was going to have to order another set but luckily I found it so Straightforward enough to fit the other sides half fitted. I'm just going to go through fitting this side. So basically, shape proof washer each side, nut on each side, tighten it up and connect the brake hoses. What could be simpler? So the route in before I connect the brake hoses, hey, sorry, the brake pipes, I'm just going to pop that through here. Shape proof washer. And the nut. Just finger tight to start with till I get it on place. Easier to handle that way. Need to get the other side of the flexor hose fed through so it goes through here. So it just slides through like that. So once it's through this side here, the shape proof washer, 
Ah, uh, Jonah. Again, just finger tight, then we can tighten that properly, and then it's just a case of getting all the brake pipe connected as we took it off. And if you're wondering the background, no, the, the sun is shining, that's not a blue screen. Right, so I'm just going to go and get these tightened up, and um, then I'll come back to you. I've flipped the subway the right way up now just to get better access and I've tightened up the bolts here and on the inside, on the other side, both sides and I've attached the brake pipes some of the brake pipes I wasn't happy with and the union so I changed them to what I was happy with double check all these if you're getting a pre-built subframe because as you've seen with this already there's a lot of parts that aren't correct they've just uh, mashed, mashed it so I've made sure it's all 7 16th um, brake union fittings and here's a classic example here does the same job, simple but the three way union here is held on by a screw and a few washers and a little bolt at the bottom there that's not the correct fitting, that's the correct fitting it's a thicker bolt and it's going to hold it in place a lot better you would get away with this, but I want it right, and I don't want it mishmashed, as you'll already know from watching my videos. So I'm going to now get this back on to the bracket here and get the brake pipe on each side connected up because I don't want to leave any exposed union ends here. If you are stopping to do this for a night, make sure you cover these up so you're not getting any dirt or anything on them. But I'm going to just do it just straight away so that the system's um, all sealed up. So that's it all attached. I just made a new pipe here. The other one was just too long and it wasn't fitting. I didn't like it. I wasn't happy with it because it was all starting to squash the pipe here. So, yep, made another one. Everything's tightened up as it should be. So that's now a sealed system except for this end. But this end's not going to be attached for a while. So I've got like a little bung here just to stop any dirt or anything getting in. And that's the, um, that side of the brakes done. I can move on to the next bit and we're one step closer. Right, so I got a new handbrake cable and the cleavage pins, brand new. Instead of getting the split pins that came off these pins, a lot easier to work with. So it's just a case of getting this um, cable routed through the same as it came off. Right, for the first part of the handbrake cable, remember this is a setup for two cables. This one is the one that attaches from the subframe. So I've done one side, clevis pin here, ensuring that basically it comes from the top and faces down. Subframe's upside down at the moment. So on here, make sure that the spring's tensioned onto the bracket here. There is a locking tab here. It's then fed through, it goes round the quadrant. This fits in here but it'll fit in better when it's under tension which it's not at the moment it then goes through the bracket here comes along at which point it will join onto the other cable at some point and be pulled through here and it just goes through the same for the other side what I've done already is I have put grease in the 
the feed bracket here and on both quadrants because that's when the cable is going to be moving back and forward. So as you can see I've done this side, um, I'll stick the camera on a tripod and you can watch the other side as I do it. Right, so this side, how it goes together, you'll notice the brake pipe's missing. I've taken this out of the way just now, I'm going to replace that and I've also to do some work here once I've done all this. So I'm focusing on the handbrake cable at the moment. So before anything goes on here, you need to remember to put this rubber boot on. It won't sit properly at the moment because it's sitting not under tension. When it's sitting under tension, the boot will fit over, so I'm not um, overly bothered about how it's sitting just now. I'll fix that later on. So once that's on, this part here, It's over there. Cleavis pin here. This subframe at the moment is upside down, so this comes in from the bottom. Basically, as uh, I've said before, so if something does fail, then it's not going to fall out with gravity. So once that's through there, got one of these little pins. That basically. It basically pushes through and locks it in place or stops the pin from shaking loose like that right once that's on this spring here needs to be under tension it has an end tab here this fits over this spring and it goes behind the bracket on the back of the plate there And as you can see, that's now under tension, so when it's pulled and it's released, the spring pulls that back and releases the handbrake. That's its job. And it'll be held a lot better once it's under tension. Right, moving forward to the handbrake quadrant. This would normally sit like this. This, as I said, has been greased. This will sit the locking tab in the centre here, like there. It won't sit very well just now because the top part's not under tension, but when this is under tension, this will be pulled right round and that'll hold it in place there. So for this purpose at the moment, I'm just going to sit that there. It will come loose until it's under tension, but I'll keep an eye on that later on. Now that side's connected. This part here comes up through each one of these ones. Again, it's fiddly because it's not under tension, but when it's under tension, it'll feed across a lot easier. So basically, that sits, comes through here like this. That sits through there. Once the other cable's on here, it'll hold it in tension. And you just need to make sure that it's not fouling on any of the brake parts or any of the inner parts here. So basically, when this is pulled by the handbrake, it's applying tension and pulling the handbrake. So I'm happy to leave that there just now until I can get the other part on, just making sure that um, nothing's catching and I'll, um, that's something I'll look at once the other part's installed. But that's fairly straightforward, it's easy doing it on a bench upside down but it's a bit different when you're working under a car, as I've found out with aid. So that's another step closer. So the new springs are installed and as you can see a lot of clearance here between the spring there and they're a lot more tensioned than the, the other ones. I've lined them up side by side so you can see just where this was bent here and you can see 
how much tighter it is, it holds it all together. This one wasn't as bad, but it was this one. And it was a lot harder to get on because it's um, tighter, but obviously it holds it better in place once it's there. So yeah, well worth replacing for the sake of a few quid. Right, I've mentioned in a previous video about the um, circlips that hold the wheel cylinder on and that um, they're on the wrong way. I put one in the wrong way and I didn't touch the other side and it's also in the wrong way so I'm assuming it's a common mistake so I thought I would just show you if it's common hopefully um, I can show you so you don't do it. So this is fairly tricky to get on as I've found in the past especially when it's been replaced when you're on the car. I fought and fought and fought and I ended up buying one of these. Fairly straightforward tool when you actually see what it's made up of, but very effective. This cost about £10 and it's worth every penny because it makes this job so much easier. So what I'm going to do is replace this by taking the old one off and putting this one on the right way and I'll show you how it's done using this tool. Right, first thing, the old one has to come off. And when I've taken them off before, they've um, they've bent. That's why I've ordered new ones. They're only a few pound each, so I didn't want to risk trying to put this one back on when it's misshaped. They can be quite annoying to actually get off. And just be careful because they are under tension. So, like I say, be careful because it is under tension. It will come. Compare it, you can see it's all stretched compared to that one. So, new one on, and um, <clears throat> the way it goes on is like that. And the reason being that this arch gives more tension against this, so it just gives a better grip. It's obvious when you look at it, but sometimes you miss these things when you try to cover things on camera or whether you try to get things done to a deadline. It's very easy to do, and yep. <coughs> So, using the tool, you can, there are ways, there's methods of doing it, stretching it on here, but like I say, I had a lot of trouble, especially on Ed when I was replacing it, so that's why I went for this. So you need the brake pipe out for this. This end here screws in. And this can be finger tight, it doesn't have to be tight, it's just gives you a grip on the wheel cylinder. Right, once that's tightened up here, this goes on the correct way. And the way it goes over, it just goes round here because it's like a horseshoe shape. Sits over. You need to make sure it doesn't catch on the back of the radius arm here when it's been tightened. Basically, sits over here like this with the open end facing the bleed screw and what happens is as you tighten this nut down it comes across the um, tapered end here and basically forces it over here so all you do is tighten this, tighten it till it goes and then we'll see how it looks when it's finished So you hear that when it's nearly there, you can hear this like click or a pop where it goes into place. And once it's clicked into place, it should just be a case of loosening it and it'll be held in place. There you go. Here the click, it's in place. 
and it's held, that's not going anywhere. And it's as easy as that. And on the other side, just the same procedure, it's now the way it should be, I'm now happy. I can move on to the next thing. Right, so now both the C-clips have been removed and new ones replaced the correct way. The brake pipes have been reconnected on both sides. So that's another job, I can now move on to something else. The next thing on my list, because I put them on the wrong way, is the brake, handbrake quadrants. See this bit here is off centre. The smaller bit, the larger bit, should be the other way around. So it just obviously tensions this in the correct place and it's obviously important when the handbrake's all connected up. So it's just a case of getting this pin out, flipping it around on both sides and because I've done it on the other side as well, on both sides and just amending that. So it's just a two minute job but very grateful that I'm, I'm doing it now than when it's on the car. So I'll get that fixed and I'll come back to you. I'm going to do the exhaust hand kit just now. I'm going to put on the attachments on the subframe, the various brackets I'll keep in a bag safe so they don't get damaged for to go on later on. So on the rear bit here, you see coming off the old subframe, we have this which is called a cotton reel. Simply feeds through like this and it's attached on the other side by split washer and a nut. That's pretty much all that holds it on. So I'll tighten that up in a minute. I'm not going to put the exhaust hand kit on at the moment, but the kit I got comes with these various different things. Basically sits on, secures and it attaches to the exhaust, but I don't want to get in damage, so I'll keep this stored away safely until it's time to get it put on. So that's the the rear one there. And for the centre mount, just as it came off for this model anyway. Just sits there like that. And that's just a um, captive nut in the subframe. So the bolt goes in with the split pin. And you know I like my copper grease. So I'm just going to go and tighten these up and I'll come back to you. So there we go, fully tightened up. This bracket here goes on here and attaches to a clamp on the exhaust when the exhaust's in place so as with the front I'm just going to keep this loose somewhere safe so um, basically when it's ready to go on it's ready to go on but yeah that's the exhaust mounting kit on getting near the end now it's just basically a few finishing touches on the high lows and then we can finally move on from this subframe Right, I'm not entirely happy with this finish. It's good and durable, but it it's horrible to work with. It's dirty and it doesn't look what I want it to look like. And it's been bothering me for a wee while, so I think what I'm going to do is just um, sand it lightly, like here, so it's still got the protection underneath. And then I'm going to go with a gloss look, so it's nice to look at, soft to touch. Um, pretty much what this front subframe is. See the difference. So, yeah, a bit more extra work, but as I says time and time again, if you're not happy, it'll just eat away. Yeah, just get it done. So, easiest thing, quick sand, get some black hammerite paint, and um, I'll come back to you and we'll see what it looks like then. There we go, the first coat. Probably give it a few to be honest, but it's good because it's got the protection underneath of the wax oil 
and it's now got the looks as well. So it's very thick, very protected and it looks good. And now I'm happy. Just need to let that dry, flip it over, do the other side and then I can start getting the last couple of bits and pieces on and that will be the subframe videos done. So yep, um, the time I let it dry it'll be a blink of an eye to you but for me it'll be a few days because like I say I'm waiting on parts coming anyway. Right, while we're waiting on the paint to dry, I have a new rear handbrake cable, but I'm going to keep this bracket here, and this that the rear cable hooks onto. These will clean up alright. The, these were newer, about £25-£30, so quite dear for a little bit of metal in comparison to some of the other things I need, so these are going to come off. Pretty straightforward this one, it just basically unscrews here. Get an idea of how far back that was. I'll take a note of how far back that was so that I know roughly where it goes tightened for the, the new cable, but it's probably a pointless job anyway because the new cable won't be as stretched so so yep, yeah, that's that come off. This has to come off as well, so that this part here will fit through it. Just feeds through. This is getting bent. This is the new part I have here. And these bits are just going to get um, wire brushed down, coated with black paint and toughened up. So in the meantime, I'm just going to stick these back on here so I know where they are. The annoying thing with getting a new cable is you don't get one of these screws. Uh, sorry, one of these bolts or one of these, so don't throw them away. Get in the habit of doing this and you know exactly where things are when you go to find them. So, the four. And after. It's been a few days since you've seen the last one. I've given these a uh, wire brush down, a sand and a clean and another coat so they're ready to go. I have also done the subframe. Top, bottom, inside out and it's drying out to the touch. And what a difference. Um, yeah, I'm really pleased with this, and it's really solid paint, it's really tough, so I'm pleased with that. I know there's a few of you guys didn't like the other look, the other feel, I didn't either, that's why I went back with it. So it took a bit of time, it took a bit of effort, but we've now got it back to what I'm happy with. And that stuff that came off, you can see how thick it is here. Lucky these things are cheap. And the new cable. A couple of pounds. So this goes on the same way the other one came off, but with the refurbished parts, so There you go, holds in place there. 
this bit will need adjusted when it goes in the car because it's a new cable it'll need properly tensioned so I'll put it like I said roughly where it was but it will need adjusted and then this So there we go, so that's all just going to sit together, I'm going to keep that in one of my new parts boxes, I'm not going to put it on the subframe at the moment because when it's getting stored it might get crushed or stretched or kinked, so um, yeah, that's getting stored away. Right, so this nut has now been talked up to 81 Newton meters. Just um, bear in mind this is the left hand side, so to tighten up it's left thread, so tighten up is anti-clockwise but apart from that the rest is just the same so I managed to get the split pin, it's been a few days since I last filmed goes through fairly easy one side gets bent back Different kinds of split pins, these to be honest I'm thinner than the ones that came off but they're still strong so I'm, I'm happy with them otherwise I would just get some more. So it's just a case of getting this bent back in shape. Slight tap just to bend it around. This is all covered with the grease cap as you'll see in a couple of minutes anyway. But. I don't want it catching on anything or jagging on anything, so just bend it in the way. There we go. So there you go, the castle nut's secured on. What we need to go on over here now is the grease cap. So these um Grease caps, I didn't have any when I came with it. And as I suggest, all I do is keep the grease into the, the hub. Silver ones and gold ones. I, I wasn't too fussed about which ones I got, to be honest. These were £8 each, so... You can just put a layer of grease around here to ease them in. The other one on the other side went in okay. Just a case of getting in, and it's a tight fit, so it's a case of tapping with the rubber mallet. Not metal, rubber. The key with this is you need to make sure it's square all the way around. If you put it in an angle, it'll just keep popping out and it'll it'll um, damage it. So just make sure it's square. Tap it all the way around. Tap, 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 and then it will go in. And it needs to be tight so it's held in. So that's that part done. I'm going to look at now getting the high low in here and attached to the nylon cup for the trumpet at the other end. Sorry for the knuckle at the other end. So you can see the nylon cup is in place here. The knuckle just needs to be greased up, greased up in here, put onto the what used to be the cone but it's the new high-low for this. Um, and that's fairly easy to go on because this isn't attached to the shock absorber of the car yet. So that's the next plan. I have got the drum to put on, but I've decided to put that on first because the drum adds obviously weight and it makes it a bit more hard to manoeuvre, so that's why I've went for the high-low first. Right, the knuckle joints, as before I'm just using normal grease to get that. I've cleaned this up first because this is the one that was on the car, so I'm just re-greasing. Make sure I get all the way in. And I'm doing the same with the... Uh, can't really see because 
tight angles, but I'm just greasing the nylon cup here as well. And it's the same as putting ones I've put on previously on. This bit here is tight, so as I'm putting it on here, I'm basically pushing that pressure and I'm turning it, and this lip will force its way over. So I'll go and do that off camera and then I'll come back to you. So fiddly, but by pushing in and turning, it forces the lip over here. Right, a bit of future proofing. I've done the thread here in copper grease as well as the other end that the knuckle joint goes into. I've also put copper grease on the inside of the cone which takes this bit here and it's just a case now of getting this sat onto the right part. Right, so I found it easier putting this end on the knuckle joint first arm gives you a bit of leeway so wind the hilo down as much as you can it just gives you more room to maneuver with the cone so that's now fully in there what we're looking at here is getting this wound up so it fits in here but you'll notice as you lift this up it also pulls it tighter in so this sits in here I've measured from here to the end where it goes in the knuckle joint for the standard um, cones or trumpets even and it's 310 millimetres so I'm going to set this as standard as I can at the moment and the way I measured it is that there's about an inch on the thread here that sits at standard but I don't want this to droop too much for storage so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it about there the same as what I've done on the other side this is going to sit here that holds that tight, that's going nowhere with that yeah so once this is held up in place you can see this drops is held in place this is locked in place which is what it does when it's on the car so to hold this in place for storage I'm just going to put a bungee clip around here to hold it tight and then nothing's going to fall out and there's not going to be any parts getting damaged by this hanging down. So bungee cord holding it in place. When I put the drum on it's going to get heavier so it'll drop even further so it's just to hold it basically so it doesn't drop, none of the parts fall out and it stays in the one place for storage. So the last part which you've seen me painting before is the drum. And you can see it dropping with the weight of that. Um, but once it's stored the other way it will be fine. The retaining bolt for this, because I don't want the parts falling off, some people don't like putting these on because they can seize and the, when the wheel's on it does hold it in place anyway. I'm putting it on because I'm not putting the wheel on at the moment as you can see, as usual, copper greased up. But, yep, that's that on. I'll maybe need to put something else on to hold this in place a bit better because it is flexing a bit too much. But that is the last piece of the puzzle. That's the submarine finished.
it's done, the subframe's finished. It's taken quite a long time, but I've not been in any rush. I've wanted to do it properly and I've wanted to take my time. Family commitments, life, no rush. Um, and that's it. Some bits more boring than others, some bits tedious, but all worth it. Um, I've tried to show you as much as I can. I appreciate some of it will be very exciting viewing, but I do try my best when I'm editing not to repeat things and not to cover things I find boring. Hopefully things that um, can be of benefit to somebody. And I've made a few mistakes along the way, as you guys have pointed out, and I've corrected them and hopefully let you know what I've done wrong. So, um, what's next? Well, this is getting put away in storage along with the front subframe. I'm going to take away this table that um, the subframe's been standing on. I'm going to get the garage sorted out a bit more. I think I'll put more floor paint on and then we're going to get the jig and get the shell on the jig, which will all be exciting and I'll get to use my new welder for the first time. So yeah, lots of plans, but you'll have seen my other projects now, you'll have seen the wee Morris Minor and you'll have, you know I've got an MG and you know I've got the other Mini along with other cars and yeah. But yeah, thanks for watching, thanks for following it. I've done both subframes now, onto the shell and the engine. So yeah, hopefully I can get a bit of progress over the next few months. So um, thanks for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, bye.